Anyway, his racist lab leak theory was thrown out as crazy. But now that the crackpot conspiracy could be useful to Biden's anti-China rhetoric, all of a sudden the establishment and the media think it's a great conspiracy. CNN yelled last week, what the lab leak theory's new credibility means. CNBC screamed, Biden orders closer review of COVID origins as U.S. intel weighs Wuhan lab leak theory. While just a few days ago, Yahoo News quietly reminded us there's still no evidence of a Chinese lab leak. But mainly, you have to go to independent news sources to get, oh, reality. Here's Danny Hai Fong at Black Agenda Report. Similar to Russiagate, U.S. intelligence has run within an entirely unsourced narrative that conveniently pins blame on another country for domestic ills and labels that country a national security threat. The Labley conspiracy is an effective psyop because it is difficult to imagine evidence that could disprove or prove the claim. Ah, those are the best kind of racist stories. The ones that can't be disproven. I see what you did there, U.S. government. I see what you did. Well played. Well played, sir. But one thing you'll never hear from the mainstream media is that all of this is stacked on top of a mostly forgotten history of the American people provably being used as lab rats by our own government. Because every once in a while, our military industrial complex looks at their weapons and goes, I wonder what this shit will do to large numbers of unsuspecting human beings. If only we had large numbers of human beings to test it on. And then they go, oh my God, we have loads of unsuspecting humans right here at home. This is so exciting, it's our lucky day. So let's begin. On September 20th, 1950, a U.S. Navy ship just off the coast of San Francisco used a giant hose to spray a cloud of microbes into the air and into the city's fog. The military was testing how a biological weapon attack would affect the 800,000 residents of the city. So they uh, perpetrated a biological attack on American citizens find out what would happen in a biological attack? Fucking great idea! Brilliant! Why not drop a nuclear bomb on Eagle Butt, South Dakota to see what the fallout will be? They, they, they're telling me that it's Eagle Butte, but we all know one man's butt is another man's butte. And if you don't believe that, you can kiss my butte. But no, I'm not making this up. In one of the largest human experiments in history. Our military covered the people of San Francisco with two kinds of bacteria, Serratia marcescens and Bacillus globigii. Pretty sure I nailed that. The gas attack sickened many and was known to kill at least one man. According to Rebecca Creston at Discover Magazine, this event was one of the largest offenses of the Nuremberg Code since its inception because the code requires voluntary informed consent to, you know, hit people with bioweapons, unless you're trying to kill them, in which case, I think the informed consent is off the table. You gotta wonder, who the fuck signs off on these projects? Uh, sir, we'd like to gas the people of San Francisco. You mean those goddamn queer hippies? It's about time! How many of them will die? Uh, pro probably just a few. O only, only a couple. Oh, it's too bad. Go ahead and do it anyway. We'll find a way to up those numbers later down the road. But that experiment was not the end of such things. It was just the beginning. Over the next 20 years, the military would conduct 239 germ warfare tests over populated areas, according to news reports from the 1970s, after the secret tests had been revealed in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Associated Press, and other publications, and also detailed in congressional testimony from the 1970s. After it came out, the government explained that the goal was to deter the use of biological weapons and be prepared for them. Yes, yes, 
of course. We want to deter biological weapons attacks on Americans by dropping biological weapons on Americans first. Our enemies will never see it coming. Plus, why would they attack us with germ warfare if we do it to ourselves? We're crazy. You can't threaten to kill a man if he wants to die. We're a country of millions of wackos. Who knows what we're going to do? It's brilliant. It's just brilliant. Of the 239 biological and chemical warfare tests by our military, some were done across the Midwest to see how the pathogen would spread throughout the country. And when asked why military planes were dispersing unknown clouds of shit over cities, they claimed they were testing a way to mask the cities from enemy bombers. Yeah, yeah, we're just, uh, we're just covering the city up from, from the bad guys. Just covering it with a warm blanket of bacteria. Just a big old protective germ blanket, all cozy and safe. From, from, the, from the bad guys, who, who are not us. The, ba the bad guys are other people who are not currently hitting you with bioweapons. That, that's us, not, not them. La later them, now us, later them, later them. Just listen, we're just doing our part, serving our country. Uh, a platter of germs. In another study of how vulnerable New York City subway passengers were to covert biological agents, for six days, the U.S. military broke light bulbs full of bacteria, Bacillus subtilis and S. marcescens, inside subway stations and watched it spread throughout the city. Quote, clouds would engulf people as trains pulled away, but documents say that the people brushed their clothing and walked on. No one was concerned. Well, that's New York for you. God damn Bio attack. I don't, I don't have time for this shit. I'm walking here. You, th you think a little bio weapon's gonna slow me down? I once rode a train from Montauk to Hoboken with a guy taking a dump across from me, making eye contact. Bio weapons are nothing. You ought to see my uncle's gas attack after a fettuccine Alfredo. I ain't afraid of you. But it wasn't just germ warfare. Other experiments involved testing mind-altering drugs on unsuspecting citizens. That program was called MKUltra, which everyone knows is also a great name for a metal band or a homemade cocktail containing absinthe. MKUltra went for 20 years, during which the CIA tried to achieve mind control by using torture, LSD, hypnosis, and electroshock therapy, sometimes on unwitting suspects. And even if they were witting afterwards, not so much. Among other things, this program murdered a scientist named Frank Olson in 1953 and accidentally created the Unabomber. So who said the CIA doesn't get results? They're doing all kinds of shit. Killing people here, electrocuting people there, fucking people's life up. Yeah, that's a hell of a workload right there. Next, there's the well-known Tuskegee experiments in which government researchers studied the effects of syphilis on black Americans without informing the men they had the disease. They were instead told they had bad blood. Not to worry, young man, you just have bad blood. It's going to be fine, but you will also die soon. But you ever heard of bad to the bone? It's like that, but with more death. The researchers withheld treatment from the study participants so they could continue to study the illness, which the men weren't told they had. Point is, these motherfuckers, the military intelligence industrial complex, are serial murderers of our own citizens. They did hundreds of experiments on unsuspecting Americans, and yet these organizations still exist and are bigger than ever, funded to the tune of a trillion dollars a year. No one went to prison for these heinous acts, because when you or I do it, it's a horrible crime. Someone's going to jail for that. But when the ruling elite do it, it's called research. Someone should write a book about that. Coming to you from Washington, D.C., the belly of the beast is redacted tonight.